Welcome back. It's time for part two of the prophet. And as he walked, he saw from afar men and women leaving their fields and their vineyards and hastening towards the city gates. And he heard their voices calling his name and shouting from field to field, telling one another of the coming of his ship. And he said to himself, Shall the day of parting be the day of gathering? And shall it be said that my eve was in truth my dawn? And what shall I give unto him who has left his plough in mid-furrow, or to him who has stopped the wheel of his wine-press? Shall my heart become a tree heavy laden with fruit, that I may gather and give unto them? And shall my desires flow like a fountain, that I may fill their cups? Am I a harp, that the hand of the mighty may touch me, or a flute that his breath may pass through me. A seeker of silences am I, and what treasure have I found in silences that I may dispense with confidence? If this is my day of harvest, in what fields have I sowed the seed, and in what unremembered seasons? If this indeed be the hour in which I lift up my lantern, it is not my flame that shall burn therein. Empty and dark, shall I raise my lantern, and the guardian of the night shall fill it with oil, and he shall light it also. These things he said in words, but much in his heart remained unsaid, for he himself could not speak his deeper secret. And when he entered into the city, all the people came to meet him, and they were crying out to him as with one voice. And the elders of the city stood forth and said, Go not yet away from us. A noontide have you been in our twilight, and your youth has given us dreams to dream. No stranger are you among us, nor a guest, but our son and our dearly beloved. Suffer not yet our eyes to hunger for your face. And the priests and the priestesses said unto him, Let not the waves of the sea separate us now, and the years you have spent in our midst become a memory. You have walked among us a spirit, and your shadow has been a light upon our faces. Much have we loved you, but speechless was our love, and with veils has it been veiled. Yet now it cries aloud unto you, and would stand revealed before you, and ever has it been that love knows not its own depth until the hour of separation. And others came also and entreated him, but he answered them not. He only bent his head, and those who stood near saw his tears falling upon his breast. And he and the people proceeded towards the great square before the temple. And there came out of the sanctuary a woman whose name was Almitra, and she was a seeress. And he looked upon her with exceeding tenderness. For it was she who had first sought and believed in him when he had been but a day in their city. And she hailed him, saying, Prophet of God, in quest of the uttermost, long have you searched the distances for your ship. And now your ship has come, and you must needs go. Deep is your longing for the land of your memories and the dwelling place of your greater desires, and our love would not bind you, nor our needs hold you. Yet this we ask ere you leave us, that you speak to us and give us of your truth. And we will give it unto our children, and they unto their children, and it shall not perish. In your aloneness you have watched with our days, and in your wakefulness you have listened to the weeping and the laughter of our sleep. Now, therefore, Disclose us to ourselves, and tell us all that has been shown you of that which is between birth and death. And he answered, People of Orphalese, of what can I speak, save of that which is even now moving within your souls? And that is it for tonight. Thank you, and may you be blessed.